Uh, so Olivier Ledeuf is professor at the uh, Université Bordeaux Montaigne in France. Uh, he's a specialist of information literacy and information cultures. He's been writing extensively um, on the topic of transmedia literacy these uh, later years. And uh, we asked him to um, do his talk on epistemological issues related to uh, information and media literacy. And so I will just hand it over to him. Uh, Olivier couldn't be here uh, today, uh, but we managed to have him among us anyway through the wonders of technology. So I give you Olivier. Thank you, Pierre. Sorry not to be there with you today. I had a stupid car accident. And uh, I will try to, to present my, my work today. Uh, I think uh, uh, the aim of this uh, presentation is a bit difficult because it's a, an epistemological uh, perspective. I will try to explain uh, my own position. Uh, first, uh, I try to give you a, maybe a strange title because in mixed uh, English and German, but I think to the German concepts are maybe better to understand what I want to, to, to show you today. Uh, Sophia, next slide. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, I think first uh, we need to understand uh, my um, own uh, way, my, my evolution. I was a former teacher librarian or school librarian in France, we call that professor documentalist. And I think it's very important because uh, I'm still a bit uh, a professor documentalist. Uh, I become a professor but in part of my brain, uh, and maybe in part of my hacks, uh, I, I'm still a bit a uh, professor documentalist. Why? Because I think I decided to, to do a PhD when I was teacher librarian. I was uh, trying to, to teach, to, to train uh, students, pupils, and I've seen and noticed lots of uh, difficulties uh, for students to uh, looking for information, to understand the new information system, to understand search engines, and that's why I decided to to do a PhD. Uh, other important points: I begin my PhD during the web 2.0 uh, context and I thought uh, that um, information literacy can't, information literacy or media literacy, I don't do the distinction for the moment, can't be the same that that was in the uh, 80s or 90s uh, before the web area and before the social web. During this period, I thought uh, that social web, blogs, networks, social networks, um, new databases, uh, the evolution of search engines like Google. Google was a search engine, but it's more than a search engine. So I, I thought that information literacy can be the same uh, that in the 80s, where we can try to to train students with a, a lot of a good practices or something like that, uh, I discovered that information literacy or media literacy have to be more ambitious. And that's why uh, the aim of my PhD work, that's why uh, I call it uh, culture of information, uh, the necessity of a, of a reformation. And I think that's the same for, for information literacy. Uh, next slide, yeah. My, uh, I tried to study information literacy, uh, articles, corpus, and uh, students at the same time. 
and I work a lot with a, a team, a French team, uh, with uh, Alexandre Serre and uh, other colleagues. We uh, cre have created a specific research group called GRCPI. In, in English, I think that could be a research group about culture of information and didactic of information. Uh, in this group, we were both uh, teacher librarians, school librarians, and uh, and professors. And we decided to uh, better examine the concepts uh, behind information literacy, media literacy, cultural information, and we tried to understand how we could better train pupils and students. And that's why we begin to try to understand what is the most important uh, concept, we call, we call them better notions and concepts, that pupils and students have to, un to understand. And uh, uh, we are here uh, 10 years after the, the creation of uh, GRCD. And I think now um, we have made some progress, but we are not at the end of uh, research. Uh, next slide. Ten years ago, I observed that we, with social web, with web 2.0, we have new literacy or new discourses about new literacies. Uh, I heard about beat literacy, or network literacy. Uh, last, last year, I, I speak about uh, search engine literacy. And I begin to study uh, tag literacy, the so literacy of foxonomy. And I, I decided to write a book a few years later called From Tag to Like because I, I think the like is a, a form of indexation too. So uh, that's why uh, a colleague of me, Olivier Schein, uh, called me uh, a literaciologue, something like a literaciologist, because uh, I was a, a bit in France, one of the specialists of literacy. I think it's important to, to remain that the concept of literacy is, is relatively new for French people. I think literacy was first an English concept um, in Quebec, in um, French language Canada. They use literacy too, but not so much in France. And since uh, two, three years, I think literacy now is uh, well known by teacher librarian and, some, and sometimes well known too by some of uh, um, politics uh, and we can meet more often literacies in this group but that is relatively new because literacy is not well known in France and sometimes we have some difficulties to translate literacy and we have lots of difficulties too to translate literate. In French, we uh, try to translate literate by literate. So that means maybe something uh, different. Next slide. Alors, what is important too is that um, I'm going to study literacy, media literacy, digital literacy, information literacy, transliteracy, media information literacy. But uh, I'm going to study other fields, especially digital humanities. Uh, I made some project about uh, digital humanities, and I made a special one called Human Lit Project uh, about digital humanities and literacies. I try to study what was uh, the literacy, the, the skills for the scientists, the engineers inside the uh, digital humanities project. I think there is 
probably an impact on connection between digital humanities and information literacy. I will try at the end of the presentation to give you some some uh, other perspective. Uh, going to study new literacies uh, because I made a project about uh, senior people and the relation between senior people and uh, their strategy to find information about health. <coughs> That's why I try to define new literacy, digital health literacy, which is a complex, very complex literacy because um, it makes digital literacy, health literacy, and information literacy. That's, uh, that's why I, I, I say sometimes digital liter health literacy is a, a kind of trans literacy. Uh, I study to epistemology of information science, uh, epistemology of documentation, history of documentation, and I try to, to work about the concept of document and the other concept near the the concept of document, like documentality, uh, which is a concept uh, uh, from uh, a work about uh, an Italian philosopher Maurizio Ferres. And I think I will try to work uh, during the next month about hyper-documentation, which is a concept uh, uh, which has been uh, created by uh, Paul Utley, the father of uh, documentation. And uh, I study Paul Atlet, uh, since many years in, uh, in, in a project called hyper Project, which is a, a French, it's, the, it's a granted by INR, which is a, the French agency of uh, research. Next slide. So, to come back to the, the first question uh, of Pierre, Pierre told me uh, the goal of the presentation is to, to clarify your position about uh, what do you prefer, media literacy, information literacy, digital literacy, trans literacy, or culture of information. I think I prefer the first time the concept of culture of information. I think the concept Culture of information, try to find a better way to produce some uh, curriculum about literacies and to try to guess what will be the most important thing to teach for our future puppies and students. And I think I will uh, try to, to end my presentation now because uh, maybe you have some question thank you so we do have time for questions um the microphone is at the bottom of the room so if you have questions and uh you're at the back of the room you may have to come closer to the microphone because it's wired to the station and you can't just uh, let it go you may try from where you are, and then we'll see if it works or not. Hi, uh, Shada. Hello, hello, Olivier. Um, I got excited about the idea of eine neue Aufklärung, and I was thinking of the Enlightenment, and I don't know quite what, but it seemed a very, it appealed to me emotionally, not necessarily rationally, and I just wondered if you could talk a little bit more about how you were interpreting that, that uh, kind of new enlightenment, or whether you were interpreting it differently. Uh, I think I, I begin to, to think about the, this Neue uh, of when I try to define cultural information in a citizenship perspective. Because in the, in the text of Kant, he clearly uh, described that uh, the citizen, the real citizen, has some skills. Uh, he said, is it the new citizen, uh, this is one who can 
read and write. And I think now we have to think about what are the essential literacy or skills in our century. What does it mean reading and writing now? And I think um, that's not only uh, the capacity to 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 write to to the basic understanding of literacy. I think it's more ambitious. And now we need to write. We need to read. But I think writing means maybe writing a text. But maybe it's a, it's produced now a, a video too. And maybe reading is the same. It's not only reading a book, a paper. It's maybe reading a picture, a video, a movie. And I think uh, we can uh, think that the, we should rewrite the, the text of Kant uh, in uh, our context now. That was the first. Uh, my opinion uh, when I, uh, I rediscover this, this text of uh, Immanuel Kant. Um, Kant uh, talks about uh, majority. I think the state of majority is a state of, uh, of citizenship. Both are really connected uh, in Kant. And um, other important points, there is another philosopher, a French philosopher, uh, who is a philosopher of the technique, Gilbert Simondon. And Gilbert Simondon uh, used the idea of state of majority of Kant in a broader perspective. For uh, Simondon, the state of majority is um, very important in connection with technical objects. And uh, I think now we need the both states of majority. Uh, the, the intellectual one uh, from Kant and the technical one uh, from Simon. Because in information system, digital system, we both need the two states of majority, technical and intellectual, and it's very difficult to uh, distinguish uh, what is a technical object and uh, what is, is um, information or text. So that's why I think we need uh, uh, this noyau of Cléron, and uh, this noyau of Cléron is both a technical perspective and an intellectual perspective. Maybe another um, way to understand this uh, new perspective uh, is when Gilbert Saint-Mandon talks about the project of Encyclopédie of uh, Diderot et d'Alembert. He says, Encyclopédie is not so, um, so, it's not a real revolution in a political sense, but it's a great evolution because uh, the reader of his encyclopedia is uh, a citizen who can understand the encyclopedia, but there are lots of pictures in the encyclopedia, and the reader can um, understand technical objects and become uh, in a process of innovation too. That's why I think the, this noyau of Cléron is um, between technical and intellectual uh, perspective. I hope I try to clearly answer your question, uh, So when you spoke about um, Kultur oder Bildung, is that correct? The pronunciation? I don't know. Um, I immediately thought of selfies. Mm -hmm. Because selfies are very individual when you're taking them and then when you post them on social media it becomes more of a more of a contribution to the collective. So is it is it correct to probably look at digital culture 
on a continuum between Bildung and Kultur? Is yes, that... I think that could be a good example. Oui. And I think that's a good example too to understand the evolution of information literacy. Because in the past, when you, you try to, to be connected to documentation or information, uh, you have to uh, make uh, uh, to go on databases or, or in search engine. That was you, or inside libraries, that was the, the first contact with uh, documentation. But now for young generation, the first contact with information and documentation um, is maybe uh, the practice of selfies, um, the documentation of, um, of myself. Mm -hmm. I think there is a connection because, of course, we can understand there is the emergence of a new culture, of digital culture, information culture, uh, with new practices, with uh, publications. And in the same time, uh, we need to explain uh, what are these platforms. And I think that's the difference between um, the fact that young people say, well, I, I'm totally uh, expert, uh, I use Instagram, I use Snapchat, I, I use Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact they really understand um, the technical objects behind the platforms, uh, the, the algorithm, uh, and the, uh, the economy of these platforms. That's something different. And I think with the, the example of selfies, we can uh, perfectly understand this tension between culture and, and, and Bildung. Mm -hmm. um, I just have a question on, uh, because on, in an article that you wrote, that you wrote uh, there was a third, uh, fourth dimension which was named critical dimensions. And um, I was wondering if you integrated it in the citizenship conception, or um, is it still uh, a fourth uh, type of information literacy that you're working on, or has it been integrated to something else? And what? Yes, <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> long time ago. I think sometimes uh, I change a bit my mind uh, about information literacy or, and uh, media literacy, but I try to to have a, uh, a broader perspective uh, of information literacy. Um, I remember, of course, I tried to, to define more than uh, three uh, visions, but now I think uh, the best maybe is is um, to exchange by mail about this uh, this point. That would be uh, easy, I think. Or on Twitter. 